Hey YouTube, it's Penny. Uh, happy Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, uh, Pentecost, as it's known in the Christian Church. Uh, today is May 19th, and there is some discrepancy, um, uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, in terms of trying to determine when the actual Feast of Shavuot is. And that's something I've been asking the Father to, to show me. Um, I'm going to bring you some scriptures, including from the Book of Jubilees, and as a sidebar, um, many of you know that I recommend 119 Ministries and their teachings. And recently they came out with a teaching where they were saying basically that they couldn't recommend the Book of Jubilees. And I love the fact that they say test everything. And I have, and to the best of my understanding, um, Jubilees is a worthwhile book, which is why um, I believe the Father chose to preserve it in K4. In Qumran among the Dead Sea Scrolls and it's one of the reasons that we at Sefer Publishing Group have chosen to restore it and include it um, in the Sefer which is the version of the scriptures that um, I'll be reading to you from so uh, so in, this is interesting I came across this recently in Jubilees chapter 6 starting in verse 35 it says for I know and from henceforth I will declare it unto you and it is not of my own devising for the affair, and that word means book, writing, scroll, letter, lies written before me and on the heavenly tablets that the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant and walk according to the feasts of the other people, which is translated Gentiles in most uh, English versions of the scriptures, meaning the people other than those of the covenant. Okay, so walk according to the feasts of the other people after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy, for they will go wrong as to the months of the Sabbaths and the feasts and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to you that you may testify to them, for after your death your children will disturb them. This is talking to Noah. So that they will not make the year 364 days only, and for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths and the feasts. Okay, so I was kind of relieved that this was actually prophesied way back that this was going to happen, that there would be discrepancy and that we would kind of lose track of the days. So um, Leviticus 23.15 says, And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven sabbaths shall be complete even unto the morrow after the seventh sabbath ye shall number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto yahweh okay so we all know that pesach is clearly the 14th day of the first month so it's saying that you're supposed to start counting on the morrow after the sabbath so the feast of unleavened bread begins the day after, so the 15th, and goes for seven days, right? So within that time frame, within that week, there's always going to be a regular seventh day Shabbat or Sabbath day. And that's when you start counting the Omer. Not, you don't start counting the Omer on the first day after Pesach or Passover. You start counting it on the first day of the morrow after the regular Sabbath that falls within the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's what I believe. So could be wrong but that's my story for now and I'm sticking to it so if that's the case then that would bring us this year to the 19th of May um, rather than I think a lot of people celebrated it like on Wednesday because they started counting the day after um, the, the, the on the first day of 11 unleavened bread okay so as I was um, I mean, not about you, but I'm like, well, how do we celebrate or observe the Feast of Weeks, um, Shavuot, um, in the diaspora, which is what we're in now, and, you know, 
what does it mean? What's it a sign of? So um, we all know that in Exodus 19 and in Jubilees 1 and even in uh, Jasher 82, it all talks about the giving of the Torah, which is the instructions, the word, the law, or the truth, um, happen on the Feast of Shavuot, as well as the giving of the Ruach, the Spirit, happened on Shavuot. And I thought maybe that was that was all there was to it, was the giving of the, the Word and the Spirit. Um, but there's more. Okay, so backing up. So in Joshua 82, 6, it says, And in the third month from the children of Israel's departure from Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, on the sixth day thereof, Yahuwah gave to Israel the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Okay, so I was kind of doing some research into the, the third month in the middle of the month because it's not always going to fall on, like it did here, the third month on the sixth day of the month. That's just happens to be what it fell on the year that the Ten Commandments were given to Moshe on Mount Sinai. Um, it's going to vary from year to year, which is why we have to count. Um, so in, uh, as I was researching like the whole middle of the month thing, I came up with several other passages. So um, in Jubilees 6.15, second sidebar on Jubilees just came to me. Um, so one of the things that 118 Ministries said when they were basically saying that they couldn't defend the book of Jubilees was they were suggesting that it adds to um, the word of uh, Yahuwah or the Tanakh. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Jubilees and Yasher, Jasher and um, Enoch and kind of like the rest of the story, um, as Paul Harvey <laughs> used to say. And so, yeah, it might seem like it's adding, and uh, but I look at it more as it's expanding. It's giving you more information. Um, so, okay, back to Jubilees, 615. And he gave to Noah, Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all in the days of the earth. For this reason, it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the feast of Shavuot in this month, once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole feast was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation till the days of Noah, 26 jubilees and five weeks of years. Okay, so whenever it talks about weeks of years, that's a period of seven years. That's a week of years. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years till the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham. Abraham. Uh, let's see. But Abraham observed it, and Yikshak and Yaakov, so Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his children observed it up to your days, and in your days the children of Israel forgot it until he celebrated anew on this mountain. And do you command the children of Israel to observe this feast in all their generations for a commandment unto them one day in the year, in this month they shall celebrate the feast, for it is the feast of Shavuot, the feast of first fruits of the wheat harvest. This feast is twofold and of a double nature, according to what is written and engraven concerning it, celebrate it. For I have written in the Sefer of the first Torah, in that which I have written for you, that you should celebrate it in its season one day in a year, and I explained to you its sacrifices that the children of Israel should remember and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month one day in every year. Okay, so Jubilees 14 1 says, After these things in the fourth year of this week, so week meaning period of seven years, on the new moon of the third month, the word of Yahuwah came to Abram in a dream. So this was before his, change, his name was changed to Abraham. Uh, dropping down to verse 17. And he, Abraham, Abram, <laughs> awoke from his sleep and he arose and the sun had set and there was a flame and behold, 
a furnace was smoking and a flame of fire passed between the pieces. And on that day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abram. Okay, so since this is in the third month, um, I'm, and it's talking about this flame of fire. I don't know. I'm asking the question. Did the covenant with Abraham, was it cut on Shavuot? I mean, it certainly sounds like it to me. And the flame of fire certainly sounds like what happened um, on the day of Pentecost. Okay. Jubilees 15.1 says, And in the fifth year of the fourth, fourth week of this Jubilee, which happens to be the, the 41st Jubilee, so that would be um, 50 years as a Jubilee, so times 41. So that's kind of how you can calculate where you are. And that's kind of what the Book of Jubilees is all about, is giving you a history of, of all of the Jubilees. Okay, so in the fifth year, the fourth week of this Jubilee, in the third month, so here we're in the third month again, in the middle of the month, Abram celebrated the Feast of first fruits of the Grain Harvest. Okay, chapter 16, 13. And she, Sarah, bore a son in the third month, in the middle of the month, at the time of which Yahuwah had spoken to Abraham on the Feast of first fruits of the Harvest, Yitzhak, Isaac, was born. Okay, so he was born on Shavuot. Amazing. I didn't know any of this. Jubilee 17, 1. And in the first year of the fifth week, Yitzhak, Isaac, was weaned in this Jubilee. Um, and Abraham made a great banquet in the third month. On this day, his son Yitzhak was weaned. Jubilee 22, 1. And it came to pass in the first week of the 44th Jubilee, in the second year, that is, the year in which Abraham died, that Yitzhak and Yishmael, so Isaac and Ishmael, came from the well of the oath to celebrate the feast of Shavuot, that is, the feast of first fruits of the harvest, to Abraham their father. And Abraham rejoiced because his two sons had come. Okay, so again, it means this all way before the law, the Torah, was given to Moses on Sinai. Okay. So, forwarding to Exodus 14, 14, three times you shall keep a feast unto me in the year. You shall keep the feast of matzah, unleavened bread, for you shall eat matzah seven days as I commanded you in the time appointed of the month of Aviv, for in it you came out of Mitzrayim, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of Shavuot, the first fruits of your labor, which you have sown in the field, and, in, and the feast of Sukkot, which is in the end of the year, which is the seventh month, um, when you have gathered in your labors out of the field, three times in the year, all your males shall appear before Adonai Yahuwah. Exodus 34, 21, six days shall you work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In earing time and in harvest you shall rest. Oh, earing time, so like ears of corn, I think. And you shall observe the feast of Shavuot, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of Sukkot at year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before Adonai Yahuwah, the Elohim of Yisrael. For I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire your land when you shall go up to appear before Yahuwah, your Elohim, thrice a year. Okay, so very important, the Feast of Shavuot, you know, one of the, the three most important ones. And the menorah, um, which is a representation of the sevenfold spirit of Yahuwah, the middle candle, or the shamash candle, is, if you look at the, the seven lights um, representing the seven feasts of Yahuwah, the shamash candle actually is the Feast of Shavuot. So, um, let's see, Deuteronomy 6, 9, seven weeks shall you number unto you, beginning to number the seven weeks from such time as you begin to put the sickle to the corn, and ye shall keep the feast of Shavuot unto Yahuwah your Elohim, with a tribute of a freewill offering of your hand, which you shall give unto Yahuwah your Elohim, according as Yahuwah your Elohim has blessed you. And you shall rejoice before Yahuwah your Elohim, you and your son and your daughter and your maid, manservant and your maidservant, 
and the Levi'im, which is within your gates, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you, in the place which Yahuwah your Elohim has chosen to place his name there, and ye shall remember that you were a bondman in Mitzrayim, and ye shall observe and do all these statutes. So, this isn't just for the quote unquote Jews, <laughs> as people refer to those uh, dwelling in the land. Um, this is for everybody. Peace of, peace of Yahuwah, peace of the Lord. Deuteronomy 16 16. Um, again talks about how three times a year all your males shall appear okay so fast forward to the new testament the brit hadashah acts chapter 2 says and when the day of shavuot was fully come so that means we are at day 50 they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly there came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, and began to speak in other tongues as the Ruach gave them utterance. Um, and just to show that the Apostle Paul, Rabbi Shaul, um, continued to observe the Feast of Shavuot, Acts 20.16 says for Shaul, excuse me, for Shaul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Yerushalayim, the day of the Feast of Shavuot. And then 1 Corinthians 16.8 says, but I will tarry at Ephesus until the Feast of Shavuot. So the apostles were still celebrating this feast. Um, and so it's not done away with, um, definitely still important. And we know that the, Mo the Moeds, the feast days, were given for signs and seasons. Um, and we know that they are dress rehearsals for what um, is to come, even though they are based on things that um, Yahuwah did in the past. Okay, so the whole idea of the Torah, the word, coming down, and the Ruach, the Spirit, coming down um, is a common theme for Shavuot. Um, and so this is interesting. In John 4, 23, Yahusha says to the woman at the well, But the hour comes and now is when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. Elohim is that Ruach. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So Psalm 119, 142 says, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your Torah is the truth. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. So if you continue to reason, um, through the scriptures, John 14, 6 says, Yahusha said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, which we've established as the truth. And the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. Okay, and then John 1 14 says, and the word, the truth, the Torah was made flesh and tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, the Torah, the truth, Yahusha, um, was given at Mount Sinai on Shavuot. And the Ruach was given on Shavuot um, in Acts 2. So there's there's got to be more to this whole spirit and truth thing, but that is the what I've based on my studies. That's what I've come up with, and that's the kind of what the whole purpose of Shavuot is pointing us to is that it's uh, it's about the, the Ruach and the Torah both. Um, being given to us on this day. So, happy Shavuot.
Barukata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the Universe. Amen.